You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. The unemployment rate in the U.S. has risen to 14.7%, folks, with 20.5 million jobs lost in the month of April alone as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. That's what it looks like for everyone, but we're looking at what it looks like for African-Americans. Joining me now is Benga Ajalore, Senior Economist at the Center for American Progress. Progress. All right, sir, what are we looking like? Um, that's overall black folks higher and Latinos higher? Yes, very much so. So black folks is up to 16.7% from 6.7%. And then for Hispanics, it went up to 18.9%, a jump of 13%. Wow. And so uh, now folks are already talking about May, June. I mean, this is not going to be a one time bump. How long uh, do economists like yourself think we're going to be dealing with this high level unemployment? It's actually really hard to figure out because of this is a public health crisis and we've been, you know, quarantining for two months, but the administration hasn't done anything. Congress hasn't done anything in terms of testing or contact tracing and doing all those stuff to actually try to combat this public health crisis. So the longer this public health crisis is going to last, the longer this economy is going to get worse. Um, and uh, with that, uh, obviously, even with a slow rollout, that doesn't mean people are going to be coming back. But here's the deal. You can you can open your business. You can talk, talk about doing hair, doing nails, restaurants, whatever. But if the customers say, hey, I'm not messing around with this coronavirus stuff, you're not going to have employee, employees coming back. Exactly. And one of the kind of sad things about this is that people are actually being forced back to work because a lot of these states, Georgia, a lot of these southern states, they put people back because they want to get people off of unemployment insurance. Because if you open up the economy and then you say you have to go back to work and you don't go back to work, then you become ineligible for unemployment insurance. And people are worried, rightfully so, of going back to work and catching this coronavirus because we aren't tackling this public health crisis. And on that particular point right there, when you talk about, uh, because again, if you have to make an economic decision, it's real simple. If I know I'm getting this in unemployment, but then if I go back, but then they cut my hours and cut it way back down. You no, know, economically, it makes sense for me to stay on unemployment. Not just economically, health-wise. I mean, we have over 75,000 deaths, over 1.2 million cases, and it keeps increasing. Because what... I People seem to forget this is about health, People, people's lives that we're talking about. And so, yeah, if you want to go back and work, then you're going to take that risk. But you actually need to stay home. So we want people to stay home. We want businesses to temporarily uh, lay people off and have furloughed so that once we tackle this, once we combat this public health crisis, then people go, go back to their original job and then we can get the economy started again. But we have to tackle, tackle this coronavirus first. Um, what do you make of, of the proposal by Senator Kamala Harris, uh, which says, look, give Americans $2,000 a month? That's a very important plan because we had that $1,200, but we know that doesn't not going to last. Even in small cities, that's not going to last a long time. We have people who are losing their jobs, but they still have to pay rent. They still have to pay their bills. There's you know, not enough places that are doing moratoriums on that. And so people are going to need this money for as long as this thing's going to last because we're talking about 14.7 percent. That's the highest unemployment rate since the Great Depression. So it talks to, tells us about how deep this is. And so to help people through, to keep paying their bills, to put food on the table, things like that, then you're going to have to have some sort of kind of process or some policy to have direct payments that's going to be continuous, not a one-time payment, but continuous payments. But I don't necessarily think we're going to have, we have a Congress that actually has those guts, even though you have some Republicans like the senator out of Missouri who has been making that particular point, who also has been saying you should be giving direct payments uh, to people, yes. especially businesses. Exactly, because this is a thing where we have to think bigger, we have to think broader. We have to help both businesses and individuals, especially small businesses, to actually keep this going. So the thing to do to solve this public health crisis is to stay at home, social distance. But to do that, we have to make sure that the businesses are able to, especially the small businesses, make them able to continue and then have individuals be able to stay at home, stay safe, stay healthy. And then once we tackle this crisis, then everyone can come back. But to do that, businesses have to stay afloat and individuals have to stay afloat. And that's why we need all this kind of packages and policies to promote this.
All right, Benjamin Adelore with the Center for American Progress. We appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Thank you very much. All right, folks, I want to bring in my panel for today. Uh, bring back Robert Patillo, Dr. Neon Bay Carter, uh, Howard University Department of Political Science, and then we'll soon be joined by Derek Holly, of course, president of Reaching America and political analyst as well. Uh, Dr. Carter, I'm going to start with you. Looking at these numbers, look, these are, these are real. And bottom line is this here. Business owners are, are unsure. Folks are saying, wait a minute. I'm like, in fact, I know as a, uh, as, a, as a woman who I know, she has a, she has a business, a spa business. And the mall said, y'all got to reopen. She said, my customers are not ready to come back. And so she turned in her, uh, gave, her money, gave her money for that particular month and said, I'm out of this lease in 30 days. So business owners are saying, it, it doesn't make sense economically for me to open up. I'm bringing employees back on the payroll. I'm having to pay them if I don't have any customers. Well, absolutely, Roland. I mean, and what is the point of opening your business if you're going to kill your customer base? I mean, quite frankly, this is reckless and it's dangerous. And I think when we're talking about the health effects, we have to also know that our, our communities are at particular risk. So this kind of stuff is, is going to be, um, we have to think more critically about this. It's more than just the, the money that uh, we are losing as business owners and as communities, it's also about the ill health effects. And when you look at African-American communities, we're usually the folks on the front line. We're a lot of the folks in service economy and other things where we're actually in more frequent, more intimate contact with people. I mean, I have members of my family who are hairdressers, right? They're not working either. But to go to work right now is going to put themselves at risk and also the families that they have to go home to. So I think it's, it's a short-sighted strategy as Bangor was just mentioning uh, earlier, um, to sort of say, we have to open up, we have to open up. And we still have a health crisis that we are nowhere near uh, having under control. Uh, let's go to uh, Derek Holly. Derek, what do you, again, make of what the heck is going on here? Uh, with I mean, we're dealing with an economic calamity, uh, the significant amount of money that has gone towards uh, folks' uh, big business. and But if you don't deal with businesses and you don't deal with this, we, these unemployment numbers are real. And you, you're talking about, you know, 14, 16, 18 percent for folks over the next two, three, four, five months. Oh, it's going to be hell to pay for any politician come November. <laughs> I would agree with that, Roland. And I think uh, Congress right now, we're definitely going to have to put forth another stimulus package. And uh, I think the House, we, they need to get back to work and come up with some type of situation, for, a solution for these people who are struggling right now. Um, I think right now, a lot of these small businesses are in jeopardy of not even coming back. A lot of these jobs are in jeopardy of not coming back. And I think until we figure out what's going to happen right now, I think the government needs to step in with a stronger stimulus package to help out the small businesses and the people who are employed by these small businesses. Robert? Well, I think the, the biggest thing we have to look at is the fact that our economy has been operating in a uh, emergency posture for over a decade. Uh, what you what happened during the Great Recession is we did uh, massive amounts of economic stimulus to the economy as opposed to the austerity measures which were taken by European governments in order to lift us out of that uh, uh, out of that recession to flatten out that economic curve and then to stimulate sp uh, spending and uh, recovery. That is that uh, graph you see of the Obama uh, administration of unemployment coming down uh, year over year and then continuation of that through the Trump years. The problem, however, was that just like if you are uh, running your car on high, uh, you run out of gas eventually. And then when something actually happens, you need to speed up, you've already burned all that out. So since we've already pulled all the economic levers, because we had the $1.5 trillion tax cut last year, because we had the $1.3 trillion spending bill, $700 million in military spending, uh, we are already stimulus uh, to the gills, and that puts us into the position of uh, falling into an inflationary curve through more spending. So our Congress has to come up with some actual um, stimulus ideas that will affect the regular American, uh, regular Americans, or regular small businesses, as opposed to simply being giveaways where we're getting Ruth, Chris, and state check uh, ten and twenty million dollars, and the airline industry can walk in uh, and just ask for twenty-eight billion dollars and walk back out the door. We have to have a targeted stimulus plan and not just get hustled again like we got on the last two um, stimulus bills, and have something that's targeted um, at regular people and not simply get a giveaway to corporations because when they got those tax cuts. 
cuts last year, instead of investing in the infrastructure, instead of investing in employees, instead of putting money away to have a uh, a rainy day fund, they tell all of us to have a six-month rainy day fund and so in case something happens, they invest that into stock buybacks, artificially inflating the value of their stocks and then cashing out on it. So we have to make sure we put guardrails in place so we do not end up in a similar situation and that we're able to pull ourselves out of this economic tailspin. Uh, but the, here's the deal. This is what happens, uh, Niambi, when you have nonsensical fiscal policy, when you give this huge tax cut, when your deficit was already still high because you were trying to reward your rich Republican donors, and this is what one reason why you don't do that. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think everybody who was thinking about that, that tax uh, cut at the time people were, were screaming from the rafters that this is going to actually not do uh, much for regular people, and they did it anyway. But you have to also remember, this is a government, this is an administration, uh, this is a Congress in many cases that doesn't think much of regular people, right? Their thing is that corporations will take care of it all, and we know that's exactly uh, not what corporations do. And in fact, that's the job of the government. But we have a government that is intent on shirking its responsibilities to its citizens, and that's fiscally, that's in terms of, of health policy and every other way. And so these are the kinds of outcomes we can get. The answer to every question is always, well, the corporations need to be saved. I mean, and it's not unique just to this administration. I mean, we've seen it before with the banks that were too big to fail. We see this time and again, and it's the American people that have to bear the brunt of this and have to pay the cost of it over the longer term. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré, the nation's first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders, John Hope Bryant, he is the founder of Operation Hope, Senator Kamala Harris of California, Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin, Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardy, Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams, Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens, Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, General Kip Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George's Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Spring, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Anna Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota Senior and Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Brayboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division Strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she's a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president, Merida Bennett College. Corner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist, Suzette Clark, Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon Madugo, president elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You get the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do, unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.
Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.